Hi, this is Nick Pizai, and I'm doing a video a series on hydraulics for operators. This is so that you can become a little bit more familiar with the math that's used in hydraulics. I know this can be an intimidating subject when we're trying to study for our exams. So I'm breaking this down into several small modules uh, that will cover all the math for all of hydraulics. And today's topic is detention times. So bear with me, I'm gonna share this screen with you. Here we go. All right, so hydraulics, detention time. This is a part of a series of license exam training modules for hydraulics, both for distribution and plant operators. Uh, you know, in water plants and in distribution systems, we use hydraulic principles in many ways, most of which are gonna require mathematics. So we need to learn the arithmetic that goes behind this, a little bit of algebra too. We'll try to make it less intimidating. We use math to determine detention times, Mass to quantify pressure and head on pumps in our elevated tanks. We have to use the math to determine velocities and flow rates. In other words, how fast is water moving through our system? Use the math to determine the amount of energy, the horsepower that it takes to move that water. And of course, often we have to do these uh, initial calculations in order to do other calculations, such as dosage and feed rates, efficiencies of pumps and systems and the cost operated and all that sort of thing. So we really can't get away from hydraulics, the math that goes with it. So today we're gonna to address that just in this one part series of detention time. So detention time, we can define it as the amount of time it takes to fill a pipe or an elevated tank, or we can define it as the time it takes to empty something from totally full to totally empty. In other words, we need to know how long that operation takes. Detention time calculations will tell us. We need to be able to calculate detention times when we pump water into storage tanks or newly constructed mains, put chemicals in a day tank, and when we do that, we always use this detention time formula. Detention time always equals the volume divided by the flow rate. I'm going to do some examples of that. Um, you know, uh, when we do these calculations, by the way, the volume is usually going to be in gallons or cubic feet. And the flow rate is usually going to be in gallons per minute or cubic feet per second. There are some variations of this, but I'm going to stick to these two today. Right, here's, a, here's an example calculation for detention time. They're telling us that we've got a 240,000 gallon storage tank. We're gonna drain it for inspection. We're emptying it at a rate of 325 gallons per minute. We need to know how long it's gonna to take to empty that tank at that rate of flow, because we, we need to know whether we need to stick with it because it's gonna empty quickly, or it's gonna take a long time. So we can maybe go do something else, go get some breakfast or go work on another job. So we use the detention time of volume, divided by flow rate. Volume of the tank they gave us at 240,000 gallons. They told us that the flow rate coming out of it, how fast is it emptying, is it's emptying at a rate of 325 gallons per minute. So if I set up my detention time problem and put up the 240,000 gallons in the formula divided by the 325 gallon per minute emptying rate, it comes out to about 30, 738 minutes or about half a day. By the way, when I'm doing these calculations, if you want to work these for yourself, you can see that I'm scrolling up slowly. You can always stop the video at that point, work them out on paper, and then try it again, just to start the video, see if you get the right answer. Now here's another one where they're giving you a detention time calculation, and they're telling you the flow rate and the time of operation, in other words, the detention time. They want to know the, the original volume of the tank. So they tell you that we got a 150 gallon day tank. You filled it with chemical at your midnight rounds, and you're using chemical all of that uh, out of that tank all night and all day at a rate of 1.25 gallons per hour. What's the amount in the tank going to be the next midnight when you go there to fill it back up? How much do you expect to find? Well, they've given us a time interval of 24 hours, midnight to midnight. Told us that the flow rate is 1.25 gallons per hour. I'm going to set this up this way. The volume used, sorry. Volume uses the time times the flow rate, 24 hours times 1.25 gallons per hour emptying rate. So we must have used 30 gallons in 24 hours. So the volume left over from midnight to midnight, the next midnight would be 150 gallons minus the 30 that we used. We should expect to see 120 gallons in that tank. Now here's some things that you should remember when you're doing a detention time calculations. When you're using the formula of detention time equals volume divided by flow rate. First of all, the volume of the tank or the pipe or the vessel that you're filling or emptying 
is always going to be on the top of the fraction, the numerator. The flow rate, the the, the, um, the time or the amount of water that you're taking in or out of the vessel, uh, always goes in the denominator or the bottom of the formula. You know, some other important things that you need to remember is that the time and volume units must match. If for example, they're asking you detention time in minutes, then the flow rate that you use has to be converted to uh, cubic feet per minute or gallons per minute or something like that. You can't do it per day. It's gotta match the time units. And maybe more importantly, the time, the volume and flow units have to match too. You cannot divide gallons by cubic feet per second, nor can you divide cubic feet by gallons per minute. You need to convert one or the other. You have to stick with it. They all have to be the same flow units. So here's a detention time calculation using conversions. I tell you you got a flow rate of 0 0.3 cubic feet per second and you're filling a 75 gallon tank. How long is it gonna to take to fill the tank? Well, we set up our detention time, volume divided by the flow rate. So we put 75 gallons, which is the volume, in the numerator. And in the denominator, we divide by 0 0.3 cubic feet per second. And that is not gonna work. You can't divide gallons by cubic feet per second. So you have to convert something. And what I've chosen to do here is to convert the gallons to cubic feet. I know that in one cubic foot, there's 7.48 gallons. So if I have 10 times that, or 75 gallons divided by roughly 7.48, I'd come out to about 10 cubic feet. So now I can do my detention time problem because I have the units that are the same. We put the volume up on top in the numerator, that's the 10 cubic feet, and divided by the flow rate of 0 0.3 cubic feet per second, I would see that it would take about 33 seconds to fill that tank up. Not very, not very long. All right, here's another detention time calculation using a conversion. Example of a detention time calculation where they're telling you that you have a 50 gallon per minute pump, you're out in the field and you're using it to fill up a new six inch water main that's 450 feet long. Roughly how long is it gonna to take to fill that main? Well, here they haven't given you a volume. You gotta calculate the volume on your own first so that you can do the detention time calculation. So the way I set this up was I set my formula volume divided by the flow rate for detention time. I calculate the volume of the pipe. What I've chosen to do is, is to take the uh, diameter is, is six inches, I divide it by 12, I get a half a foot diameter. I'm doing 0.785 times a half a foot squared times the 450 foot length. That will give me cubic feet. So I have to multiply by 7.48 gallons per cubic feet. And now I've calculated my volume of 660 gallons. I can put that into the formula because the, the flow rate that they gave me was 50 gallon per minute. And I see that the detention time is going to be 660 gallons divided by the 50 gallons per minute, or about 13.2 minutes. So that just about ends it. I did put in this last slide, which is conversion factors that you tend to use in hydraulics. I know they probably give you these on the top of your exam. But just to be familiar with them, you just simply look at the, the, the uh, table here. And you see that, for example, if I want to go from days to minutes, I would multiply by 1440. I want to go to cubic feet to gallons, I multiply by 7.48, and so forth. So these are conversion factors. These numbers that you multiply never change. Conversion factor doesn't have any units. It just says multiply this times that number, and you're going to get you're going to convert it to whatever you're trying to go to. So with that, I'm going to stop here. Look forward to some of the future um, series that we're putting together for hydraulics, and we'll see you next time.